contact information. What are we really doing with it? Hi everybody, I'm Lori Guest and I am back with the third installment in my series on the results and opportunities missed from a recent secret shopping project that we did for a client. Now, obtaining a person's basic contact information, the name, the phone number, and the email address from a potential new customer is a smart and simple place to start. And every website that you've ever visited has a contact form that captures this information. We know that when a customer is fully engaged and makes the effort to submit a contact form, that there should be an internal process for what we do with that lead. Which is why it's so surprising to say that in my 15 years of secret shopping, I can only remember two times when a business actually took the time to follow up with their secret shopper, checking in after the shopper didn't make their purchase on their first encounter. We all know that a warm lead is closer to conversion than a cold one. Why fumble this incredibly easy chance to connect and more importantly, close the deal? Let me share my all-time favorite secret shopper experience that I had personally, and I even liked it so much, I wrote about it in my book, The Ten Cent Decision, How Small Change Pays Off Big. So here's the short version of the story. A large bank that had over 14 locations had hired me to pretend to go into each branch with a postcard that they had sent out to a bunch of leads. And if you opened a new account with the bank and you brought the postcard with, you got some form of a gift, some gift basket they were giving out. So they had given me fake index cards to use, and this was going to be our tracking mechanism to find out which personal bankers did what they were supposed to do. Well, long story short, in one of the branches, I ended up with a personal banker who did such a phenomenal job that I was not able to get out of the situation before she asked for my ID, because obviously then that would expose me as being somebody different than I had pretended to be. So I quickly said to her, you know what? Oh my gosh, I left my driver's license at home. Now keep in mind, I'd already given her a fake address when I sat down and began the forms with her. And so I quickly aborted the entire mission under the disguise that I would run home and get my ID and come back. And of course, she received high marks for the great job she did. But here's the funny part. Fast forward to when the event happens, and I'm doing the reveal in front of the entire banking organization on all the great things that people did. She won the gold award for personality and attention to detail and all these wonderful things. But when she came forward to get the award, I'll call her Beth, Beth had this complete disgusted, aggravated look on her face, and I couldn't understand why. Well, I came to find out later that after work, she realized that she had not given me the gift basket that I deserved. So she'd gotten one out of the storage and she put it in her own car and on her own time was driving around looking for an address that doesn't even exist. So although she was happy to get the gold award, she was aggravated how much time I had wasted. And I saw it as she deserves a double gold award for her attention to following up on a contact that had not converted. So here's my big question for you. How hard do you work to deliver the basket? Now, I don't literally mean drive around with a bunch of goodies. I define your basket as an extra something special that isn't necessary, but it is certainly appreciated. So what's my quick fix? Create an email that welcomes your potential new customer to your organization. You can include pictures, testimonials, link to feature videos or articles that you have available, an FAQ page, or I like this even better, a creative page that's called What New Customers Should Ask Us But Don't. It is likely a new customer is comparing you with someone else out there. Without spending too much time or money, you can make a digital welcome basket. And no, it doesn't have to look like a basket. If you like this idea, but you don't know how it would work for you, I'm giving you a special invite, only for you who are listening to this video. I invite you to call me for a free 15 minute pinpoint phone call and I will help you figure out what your digital welcome basket could be like. I won't do the work for you, but I'll help get your creative mind where it belongs. This is how serious I am about helping you grab those tire kickers who don't stick, but easily could if we only had tried harder to make the contact information valuable. So. My contact information is found in the description of this video. I'm here for you, and I welcome you reaching out. 
And I promise you that after you do, what you'll receive from me is my own version of a digital welcome basket. Thanks for listening.